Hello, this is Dean Bostic, and welcome to the fourth episode of Charities. Um, for those of you that haven't seen my show before, I interview nonprofit organizations in the neighborhood. And today we have... I'm Dina Case with the Kitsap Humane Society. Mm -hmm. and she's going to tell us a bit about what the Humane Society does and um, the functions and different services they provide. Mm, absolutely, it's here. Well, thank you for having us here today. Sure. Um, I'm really glad to get a chance to talk about the Kitsap Humane Society. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people think we're just the dog pound, mm -hmm. that if we pick up dogs or people dump off animals on us, and then that's it. They either die or maybe if they're lucky, they get to go home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the case. Uh, we take very good care of our animals at the Humane Society. Um, the whole mission of the organization is that every adoptable animal will find a home. And sometimes people ask me, well, how much longer does this dog have? As long as that animal is not aggressive beyond treatment and rehabilitation or does not have a medical condition that is uh, terminal or chronic and is causing them to suffer mm -hmm. and they're holding it together okay living in the shelter they stay there with us we've had uh, dogs stay with us sometimes uh, up to a year almost oh. and during their time there uh, we have many programs our, our vet services program is amazing we have two vets on staff and um, several of our local area vets uh, come in and help us. Dr. Larson, uh, with the, he has a mobile vet service. Dr. Paulson from Ridgetop. Uh, Dr. Moore, who I believe is retired VCA. Uh, a lot of them come in and coach our vets through some very complex orthopedic surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, we've had people uh, help our vets raise funds to send animals to go get very expensive treatments sometimes if that animal is a good candidate for uh, that use of that resource. Um, they also provide, you know, just good old uh, treatment for kennel cough, uh, vaccines, spay neuter, uh, treatment for skin conditions for our animals at the shelter. And those services are also provided to the members of our community at a very low cost. We have uh, low cost vaccines, uh, microchips, and spay neuter programs for the people of the Kitsap uh, County community. What is the, um, the average number of pets that you have on staff, I mean on, on location normally? Um, there are usually around 70 dogs and sometimes, right now it's kitten season. Mm -hmm. uh, our cat population can go, has been as high as 140, um, not necessarily in the shelter because we have very many fantastic foster volunteers that will take little kittens home and uh, wait till they're old enough to be spayed and neutered and be ready for adoption. Uh, on average, uh, we have about 60 cats. Um, 40 of those are, are usually adopted. Uh, I guess it's probably about 60 cats are available for adoption and 40 dogs at any given time. Um, um. And the cost of adoption for a dog is $135 on average. And uh, cats, unless we're having a cat special, mm -hmm. is uh, $80. On Fridays, we have Feline Friday, and all cats over a year old are free to good homes. Um, nice. Even though we give them away, the uh, uh, adoption process still involves an application and an interview with an adoption counselor. And we do that to be sure that all animals are going to be matched to the right family and the right type of home. And so that the adopter is happy with their selection of their pet and that the pet has a successful life after that. And what type of qualifications do you look for in your um, adopters? Um, it can vary. Uh, you know, for a very active pit bull, we probably don't want him to go live on a houseboat. <laughs> um, uh, however, the, the little skipper key could probably go home with that person as long as they were active. Uh, we make sure that uh, the animal is suitable to go home with children if the family has children. Um, we like to make sure that uh, the person is aware uh, that there might be some veterinary expense with their pet. Even your basic healthy animal is going to need vet care. And so the qualifications mainly are a loving home that uh, if you're renting, we want your landlord to be okay mm -hmm. with the fact that your, your pet lives on their property. Right. And um, those are the sorts of questions that we ask um, to, to make sure that we're making the good best match possible for everyone because we want the humans and the animals to be happy. What is the turnaround time between someone saying, okay, I like this, this puppy or this mm -hmm. pet and the puppy going home with them? 
most of the time you're, you will be able to adopt on the same day. Yes. However, uh, sometimes a puppy or dog or cat comes in and it might be of a very desir desirable breed mm -hmm. and it's only been there for a few days. Um, sometimes you might have to wait uh, a, a day or two for them to receive their spay neuter uh, surgery and treat any you know veterinary checkover or treatment that they might need. Yeah, so it's not like a big long process, you know, a couple of weeks or a month where you have to do a bunch of paperwork and applications and no. not difficult. It's it can be a long process when we're busy. I will mm -hmm. not lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we are you know we are a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and we definitely do the best that we can. But sometimes our lobby area is just crazy. However, uh, everyone is actively working, the adoption counselors and our customer service people who are just, uh, they've got hearts of gold, those ladies do. Yeah. Um, and uh, we take time with each person, and I think that's probably what makes the process. Uh, we go for a while, Some, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be up to two hours, uh, but when it, your turn comes, we're going to treat you like family and make sure that your questions get answered and that you feel cared for and that you're informed uh, about the care of your pet and what you're going to need to expect. Now, is there a certain breed that you get more often than not, or certain oh, age groups? The good groups old all-American pit bull. The pit bull. Um, yes, we, we uh, are one of the few shelters that will take pit bulls. Mm -hmm. um, we are an open admission shelter, uh, meaning that all animals from uh, Kitsap County are welcome to come to our shelter. It does not mean that we adopt out all of those animals. Um, however, uh, pit bulls have really large livers, and they are a very healthy and hearty breed. Thirteen puppies is not unusual from a mama oh, pit bull, wow. <laughs> and um, they they tend to just be very healthy. They're a very popular breed, mm -hmm. uh, and so we do see a lot of them. And we we tend to get a lot of uh, herding breed dogs. Uh, number one, they're very smart and they're good at escaping a lot such of the as time. Herding breeds such uh, as uh, Australian cattle dogs. Mm -hmm. um, once in a while, Australian shepherds, uh, mm -hmm. border collie mixes, uh, those types of dogs. We get herders in there too. Um, they also have a, a tendency to do what they do best and herd things, mm -hmm. which can involve nipping sometimes. And so. A lot of the time, the person who has the very tiny backyard didn't realize what they were getting into, mm -hmm. and so we get them. But uh, through through uh, good interviewing and education, we do tend to find them really good homes where they'll fit in better. Now, what are the some of the certain types of um, breeds? I mean, as opposed to a terrier and a, what are some of the different types of? Uh, of dogs. Okay, um, we get uh, you know lots of hunting dogs. I mm. believe that hunting is probably popular Such here. As. Uh, we will frequently see, um, well, not very fr frequently, but one of the most common uh, dogs we get in there are, are various types of hounds. Mm -hmm. um, hounds are also a very active breed that uh, belong in an active home where they can express the job that they were born to do. Right. Um, we do see lots of labs and and golden. Uh, type of dogs. That's a very popular breed. There are a lot of them, lots of families like them. Uh, however, again, if you are not an active person, a dog that will dig and run and bark and mouth <laughs> and jump mm -hmm. can be very difficult and dogs will display those problem behaviors if they are not in the correct home. So again, that's part of our mission is to make sure that uh, people are aware of what type of dog they're getting. Um, we also get lots of chihuahuas. Oh, cute. <laughs> I have two of them at home because of that. So they're they're wonderful, but they're they definitely have their own personalities. The chihuahuas do. Now, is there a certain age group that that adopts more than others? Um, our demographic here is is uh, military as a general okay. rule, and it seems that our demographic is probably the uh, mid to uh, mid 20s to early 30s uh, sort of group. Um, there are, are lots of, of people who have children. Um, I, I myself, as a, a dog trainer, I've been a trainer for about 20 years. Um, I, I prefer, and through my own experience of having children of my own and now a grandchild, 
Uh, it's really much easier to adopt a dog after your children are about five years old. Okay. Um, they're better, better equipped to handle the unpredictability of the dog, and they are more predictable. Small children are kind of unpredictable behavior-wise. Exactly. And um, uh, uh, even a very calm dog can be taxed by a two-year-old human. Um, even very calm humans can be taxed by two-year-old humans. So um, that does happen with our dogs sometimes as well. So uh, it's not that people with small children can't adopt. It's just that truly uh, one of the best decisions you could make is to wait till your kids are a little bit older and can actively help with the feeding, brushing, mm -hmm. and playing with the family pet. Wow, that's nice. So tell me, in your words, what does your mission statement mean to you? I mean, you've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to, to this um, occupation? Um, I started off in a Siberian Husky rescue group, and I realized when I was there that most of the animals were there due to behavioral problems, mm -hmm. not because they had cancer, not because people were actually moving, not because they had babies, but because the animal was jumping and digging and barking and <laughs> chewing and hard to walk, and so therefore they didn't get enough exercise. And when I was very, uh, when I was younger, I was going to save the whole dog world with training. <laughs> and uh, though I've gotten more realistic in my views, um, that altruism still exists for me. I really do uh, want to help uh, people and dogs communicate better with one another. And I was really honored when this position. Uh, came open at Kitsap Humane uh, and that they were actually spending some money to try to uh, help the animals with behavioral problems. I was really glad to be able to get this job and I love my job. Um, it's, it's, I could just do it all the time and I would probably do it for free but don't tell them. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this, it's, it's just important uh, that training is done. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, it's just like working on your own car. Yes, you can do it some, but if it has a real problem, you should probably see a professional. Mm. Um, we do have many fine professionals in the area, and if people call the behavior helpline, I can usually do a referral for them to a good trainer. Um, but dogs have to learn to live with people, mm -hmm. and you have to teach them how to do that. They're not born knowing how to do that. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's our mission at the, at the Humane Society uh, is one of kindness and caring for the animals. And it's not just animals, though. It's people, too. Um, most of our programs that benefit the pets also benefit the people who are doing them. Um, I don't know what some of our, our most, we have the most fantastic volunteer force. I just love them. Um, they are all very, very compassionate and loving people, and I don't know what they, the streets would just not be safe if they didn't have the shelter <laughs> <laughs> come yeah, to. Yeah. Um, they all work very hard with the animals. We have people who come in and work with frightened cats and oh, um, nice. clean up after them and give them toys and petting and brushing and help socialize them as well because a stay in the shelter for a cat can be very difficult for them as well. Um, and we have many volunteers who come in and work with the cat socialization. Uh, we have volunteers who walk our dogs. Um, going for a walk is as basic a need as a bowl of food is for mm -hmm. most animals. And they get them out twice a day so they can relieve themselves, sniff the ground, and get a little bit of exercise. Of course, with 60 or 70 dogs to walk, wow. we need a lot of people doing that every day. And there's never enough dog walkers. So if anyone wants to come walk dogs, we would sure be glad to have you. Um, we have uh, volunteers who do basic manners training with our dogs. And the, the first goal and key is to help them become more adoptable. Mm -hmm. uh, a dog that is jumping and lunging towards people, most people go, oh, no, thank you. Right. I'll try the next one. Mm -hmm. And so they teach them uh, manners in the kennel and out. And uh, that, that whole program is run by our, the volunteers themselves. Uh, we introduced it, we did the training, and a few of them took a hold of it and have just grown it into a team of, I believe we have like 45 trainers. Wow. Um, and they are using the open paw method of training. Uh, it was uh, a method done at the San Francisco SPCA by Dr. Uh, Ian Dunbar and his wife, Kelly Gorman. Mm -hmm. They developed this for shelter dogs, it's actual shelter dog training. Um, we also have a relaxation uh, team. They come in and we have uh, pet massage therapists mm -hmm. that come in and give them massages. Um, we have people that sometimes just take them into a quiet office and let them lay down and take a nap and chew on a bone. 
Um, some people take them for short outings during the day for a walk in the park or out for coffee. Um, all of those things help the dogs to de-stress. That is so nice. I mean, most people think that Humane Society is just like you said, just a pound. I bet mm -hmm. few people know that you do so many services. Uh, we um, do. We, we have a lot of them and um, we're, we're trying to network with more organizations in our community. Uh, we have, uh, we've partnered up with the Coffee Oasis. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I, Ryan, yeah. yeah, the Orion Project. Orion was my dog. I had him for about 10 years and he taught me everything I ever needed to know about being humane, being compassionate, and learning to laugh a lot. He was a husky mix, oh, and he had yeah. quite the sense of humor. Yeah. And uh, he went from being a skinny, uh, very abused animal to becoming a therapy dog. He did the uh, READ program, which is uh, a reading program for children mm -hmm. for the English as a second language students at my son's school when we lived in California. And when he passed away, I wanted to do something to uh, be able to talk about my dog <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and also to help uh, in the spirit of him uh, help other animals but mainly people uh, you you can't if you take care of the people the people can take care of the animals and that's one right. thing that I've learned through being at the shelter if you teach someone how to do something good for one of the pets they'll go do it and they'll do it every week and so um, that's one of the things that I really focus on. But the Coffee Oasis, uh, which helps youth uh, gain job skills, social skills, uh, and, and eliminates barriers for uh, young people who are struggling. Um, they help them get driver's license. They help them get involved with uh, social programs if they need them. And they came to me and said, you know, a lot of our kids want to work with the animals. And I was thrilled because yeah. that fit right in with the Orion Project. Doing, yeah. Um, we would like to go bigger, um, both organizations would like to go bigger one day with the Orion Project, but for now, um, the youth come and they train and they help out in the kennel and we have, we have a small class every day and then we all kind of break and, and get out and work with the dogs. What do you talk about in your classes, just like general um, training guidelines or? Um I, I teach them, I try to give them as much of the information, uh, you know, along the way of, of becoming a dog trainer, I try to teach as much of the valuable things that I've picked up along the way. Uh, things about dog breeds, like what we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, you know, what to expect from a terrier, what to expect from a non-working dog. Mm -hmm. um, we learn about those things. Um, I've also taught them uh, dog body language. We study that a lot. Uh, they do, the kids have come in and even worked with our assessment team. Uh, we have an assessment team that uh, helps us identify which dogs need behavioral help, mm -hmm. which dogs may not be placeable at all, and what dog might be best in what situation. Like uh, if, if you have a dog that is kind of possessive of toys, you don't want to send him home with a toddler. Yeah. And so the, the, the youth participate in assessments. We probably do those once, once a month as a group. Um, the assessment team comes in three times a week, but the youth themselves have, have come in and worked with uh, our assessors. Um, so we've learned about dog body language and safety and what to do if something does go wrong with a dog, um, about not putting our hands in the middle of dog fights and, mm. and safety rules like that. Um, and so we, we go over quite a bit. And then just the basic training technique, how do you get a dog to sit down? How do you get them to lay down? What do you do if they don't feel like it? Yeah. Um, what to do if the animal you're working with is frightened and how to help them not be frightened. And that's something we encounter a lot. And I believe that that is this, the youth team's strong point. They have amazing enthusiasm and empathy for the dogs and, and the cats. A couple of them have wanted to work with the cats as well. Mm -hmm. But because they seem to understand because they've gone through difficulty, um, it, it seems to empower both the human and the dog yeah, when they work yeah. together. And uh, their strong point really is bringing some of the frightened animals out of their shell. Um, we've had dogs respond to them that wouldn't respond to anyone else. So Are cats trainable? Cats are highly trainable oh, when they feel like it. Oh, <laughs> <I guess. That's laughs> um, uh, one of the most humbling things I ever did was try to click or train a cat. Uh, However, when they're on, they're on, and they do like to play. Um, you can have a cat do an agility course. 
Um, th you can teach them uh, to be handled, you know, using positive association, uh, such as treat training and finding things that motivate the cat to do what you want them to do. Um, we do have a feline behaviorist on staff, and she has a team of volunteers that are similar to the dog team, only geared towards cats. What type of training do they need? I mean, how long do you um, have to go to, how long do you have to train to be able or be qualified to train a, a cat or a dog? Is there a certain curriculum? Um, there, with dog trainers, some dog trainers have no education at all. They just have it. They just had a dog and they taught it to sit and they hung out their shingle and started charging people money. Mm -hmm. um, there are other dog trainers who uh, are just, similar to myself in which we just, you can't teach us enough about a dog. We go to seminars. Um, I did, and I started off as a PetSmart trainer and then went on to do a two-year apprenticeship with a behaviorist at a large kennel. Um, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do for this youth, uh, this group of youth, is to pay it forward. Uh, mm. The gentleman that I studied under uh, taught me many things and made sure that I got a good education. And uh, um, I went on to become his training program supervisor. And then when I moved to Washington, this job opened up. And this was sort of what I started out to do to begin with, um, mm. was to work with, with animals that really needed some help. Yeah, I bet they really appreciate, animals appreciate your experience and, and what you bring to the table with them. Absolutely. Um. The, the, I feel very appreciated in my job. And I think it's because I, it does so much more for me than I could ever do for it. You know, that's, uh, it's a good gig out there at Kitsap Humane. Oh, wow, 20 years, that's, that's a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find that um, as far as getting your animals, do a lot of them come in abused or a lot of them just kind of um, donated? Or how do you, what condition do you find them coming to you in? Very rarely, pe we, we, it seems like when we get an abuse case, it's mm -hmm. very extreme. Very rarely do the animals that come into the shelter, are, are they abused? A lot of the time they're just neglected or misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Uh, people brought home puppies and then did not realize you have to teach them how to live in your house. And uh, so most people have tried to train uh, their pet and it just didn't work. A lot of people did not take into consideration that they might be going to countries or communities that have breed restrictions or mm -hmm. did not realize the cost involved with uh, transporting an animal across the country or over the ocean. Um, and so we get lots of dogs and cats such as that that are the victims of just uh, a lot of the time just uh, company relocation, military moves, things like that, that people did not think about how they would relocate their family pet and did not plan for it because there is expense involved. Mm -hmm. um, the animal has to be able to be crated. A lot of dogs have never been put in a crate. There's, there's all sorts of reasons animals come to our shelter. Uh, we have many dogs every year who, who belonged to a person who passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of them are just family pets that need uh, maybe a little fixing up, and some of them don't even need that. Uh, Suzette, who was supposed to come here with me today, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> got adopted yesterday because right, yes. I think she did it on purpose. Well, she didn't um, want to hang out with us. Yeah, but she was she was just awesome. You could do anything with her. She was an eight-year-old lab, and she was the most polite, wonderful dog. And um, she just simply had an, an, an elderly owner that simply couldn't care for her anymore. And so we get animals for that reason a lot of the time as well. Um, divorces, deployment, those are why all the animals come to the shelter. See, and who did you bring with you today? Um, this is one of my favorite young trainers. Her name is Alyssa Powell, and she is with the Coffee Oasis group, and she's just amazing and really good at what she does and learns quickly, and I wanted her to come and help foster be on the television show. Now, Alyssa, what made you want to get into um, working with pets, working with animals? Um, all the time. I've always been around animals, mm -hmm. and they're amazing. Yeah. So what do you want to go into? Uh, training the animals. Yeah, you want to be a Definitely. trainer, huh? Mm -hmm. That's cool. What kind of dog is that? What is he? We think he's an Italian Greyhound mix, but mainly he's what we call Brown Shelter Blend. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I can <laughs> catch all. <laughs> We're not really sure what he is, um, and he was a dog that came to us extremely fearful, and um, 
Alyssa's group is, is, has worked some with him, and I've taken him home with me in the evenings to help him get socialized. And I promise you, last month, he could never have been here. They've done such a great job, and uh, my own dogs have done a good job with him, too. So he's, he's coming along nicely and should be ready for adoption uh, probably in a few more weeks. He's been so good. Does he sit and, um, on cue and things like that? Is Do you think you could get him to sit, Alyssa? As soon as I get him out from under okay. the chair. Toss, mm. a, toss a treat off to the side. Make him go after it. No, you don't want it? Come on. Oh, what a there cutie. We go. Oh, now he's, he's looking for the treat. He's, he spends his amount of time. Oh, good there we boy. go. He sits when he wants something, oh, so okay. it's becoming a default behavior, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, and he may lay down. Let's see how he does. He knows we're watching him now. Mm. A little camera shy. Oh, yeah. he won't play down. Oh, I'm sorry. No, because <laughs> yeah, so he figures if he's so cute, he can does do whatever he wants to. Well, I think that might have been some of his problem before. Yeah. Um, was that uh, uh, lots of people, if they don't do what what you know, if the dog doesn't do what they ask, they give him the treat anyway because they're so cute. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know about trust fund children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what so do you think about that? If an animal um, does, is it still good to treat them? I mean, if they don't do you know, what you want them to do, is that like a, a good way to teach well, them? Well, most of, most of us do not get paid unless we do the job we're asked to do. Mm -hmm. And dogs like to work. They do. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and it's just like uh, any, any other living creature. If you have too much of a reward, it's not a reward anymore. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. okay. if people keep that in mind, uh, usually you can get your dog to cooperate with you and work with you and be your partner. Nice. Okay. Well, if I want to thank you, and thank I want to thank Alyssa, and I want to thank my little co-host down there, <laughs> Foster, for um, joining me today. Letting people know that Humane Society does a lot of services. It's not just a pound. You know, they've got a lot of training services, placement, um, a lot of different things. But you guys go to our website and check out some of the um, puppies or dogs available they have for adoption. Do you have a website with your pictures on Yes, we do. Pictures um, on them? They're up there, and, uh, you know, uh, we often have more animals than are just on our website. So mm -hmm. really the best thing to do is come in and see them because some of them are not photogenic, and some of mm -hmm. them are camera shy, and sometimes we were just so busy, like the day we got 42 animals in on a Saturday, oh, wow. <laughs> um, and not everyone had time to get their photo done. So please just come down and see us. We would love to have you come visit us and maybe take home some one special. Now what's the website that people can go to to see? It what is, you have? Um, um, if you go on our website, it's www.kitsap-humane.org, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it says available pets. You can click on it, and it will take you to our Pet Finder account. Wow, it makes it so easy to, you say, take a friend home. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. No Our adoption uh, application is online as well. Oh, so. perfect. Well, I want to thank you guys again. I mean, I love to have you back. I'd love you to know. come back. This was mm -hmm. fun. Thank you, Dina. Time. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for sharing uh, what you do. You know, and and um, thank you, Foster, for being such a good buddy, a good co-host. Maybe I right. maybe I'll have you back, yeah. or he may take my job here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate um, all the viewers listening to um, the Humane Society and about what they do for the community. And this is Dean Bostic, and see you for Charities 5 soon.